And he says, I know that. I'll get into the driving seat. You can sit on the dicky, dicky seat and show me the taps. <laughs> A lovely story from B. Beeman, who we're honouring today uh, in this ceremony here at Flying Legends. Now, in fact, the podium party are uh, with us and will shortly be taking their places. I deserve them, but I'm very pleased to be here in uh, 
in uh, Dexford, a place which I have known during the war in 1942, precisely when uh, the 609 was flying uh, on typhoons at the start of their, uh, their conversion. But uh, it is for me a great honor to pay a tribute to an outstanding airman who made history not only in wartime but also while flying in peacetime. No doubt the achievement made by Roland Beeman in two aviation were outstanding and were due to his personal engagement while flying some of the most advanced prototype. He deserves our admiration. But today has a different meaning. We wish to recognize his leadership as commanding officer of 609 Squadron, of which many Belgian pilots were at that time members. He led them in action, and his inspiration, his initiative, his authority were the key to the many successes achieved by the squadron in air battle and while fly attacking targets on the ground. Our countrymen did take their share in this achievement. During his command of 609 Squadron, 22 enemy aircrafts were destroyed and 13 were damaged. The squadron shot up 111 locomotives, of which 25 were accredited to Beeman. This was the result of his own personal action and determination. He was only 22 years old when he took over the squadron. His war experience in this campaign of France and the Battle of Britain was already great and invaluable. His flying as a test pilot of the Hawker Typhoon gave him authority to stand firm and support his aircraft against strong opposition. He saved the Typhoon and later was able to conceive its operation use to make it one of the best fighters of World War II and a major asset during the invasion of Normandy and the victory campaign of Europe. As an appreciation to Roland Beeman's leadership, the Belgian Croix de Guerre should have been awarded to him in 1943 at the time he left the squadron. If this was not so, I wish, however, to say today, 60 years later, that we have not forgotten Roland Beeman and that we want to present his award to his daughters with our appreciation and gratitude for all what he did achieve and for the way he led our Belgian pilots at the time. May I take this opportunity to say in the name of the Belgian members who served for six years in the Royal Air Force their appreciation for the friendly way in which they were accepted. They played their part in the war effort, but they will never forget the friendship which prevailed during the war time. Thanks to the Royal Air Force and to its leaders for this, with our expression of our deepest gratitude. And now I want to ask uh, Carol Beeman and uh, sisters to come and I will present the uh, uh, Belgium Croix de Guerre 60 years later, but still with the same admiration and, and friendship for Royal and Beeman. General Donnie, distinguished guests, members of 609 Squadron, it is with great pleasure and pride that my sisters Trisha, Billy and I, who are representing our large family, accept this medal on behalf of our father, Roland Beaumont, better known to most of you as B. B was essentially a very modest and self-deprecating man, but particularly in his later years, 
He was very thrilled and touched to be honoured by his peers. And I know he would have been so delighted by the kind words that you have said and the great honour that you have shown him in giving him Belgium's highest honour, the Croix de Guerre. B had already had an amazing career before joining 609 Squadron in 1942, and he had a very distinguished one subsequently. But 609 always held a strong place of affection in his heart, witnessed by the Squadron Shield, which was kept on the wall in the hall at home, and is now owned by one of his grandsons. And the piece of fuselage from his typhoon, decorated with his locomotive kills and with tally-ho painted on it, had also lived in the hall until it's found its way to the RAF Museum at Hendon. B was also very proud of the fact that he had pilots from other countries in 609, including several Belgians, of whom I know some are here today, and he would have been so thrilled. It is hard to believe that he was only 22 years old when he was CEO of 609, and many of you will know that his youth did not deter him from persuading Sir Hugh Saunders, Sir Trafford Lee Mallory, and several other senior RAF personnel in fighter command that as none of them had flown the typhoon, and he had, that therefore he knew more about it than they did. I recently read the very interesting summary of B's career with 609 that is on the website. In that piece, it mentions when B crash-landed near Deal in March 1943 after engine failure. Some 20 years later, I was nursing in London when a lady who, had a who was a patient recognised my name and was quite overcome in telling me that it was her father who had rescued mine. B had a fractured skull and two very black eyes. Typically, I had known nothing about it because B had never mentioned it. B received a bar to his DFC and his first DSO while commanding 609 before he returned to experimental flying at Hawkers. And I know how thrilled he was to know that he was going to receive this award. In these peacetime years, when young men and women are only just coming out of university at around 22 years of age, I think my sisters and B's many grandchildren look back on his achievements at such a very young age with awe. But he showed the same qualities then that he did all his life. Determination, complete honesty, fairness, dedication and hard work, modesty and a gentle and kindly sense of humour. He is very much missed by all those of us who knew and loved him, but it is heartwarming to have him remembered and honoured in this way. And we would like to thank you, General Donnay, for presenting us with this award on behalf of your King and Government. And a very special thank you to all those of you who have been involved in making this dream become a reality. It is a wonderful occasion, a wonderful way to honour B and how he would have loved to have been here. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, would you now please stand and gentlemen remove your headdress for the playing of the national anthems.
you, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes the ceremony of the investiture of Wing Commander B. Beamont. Thank you very much for your attention.